Coleman at American, also AGM lanterns, produced the embossed lanterns for the U.S. Forest Service in the early to mid 1930s. These are a couple of mine that I thought I would like. I'm actually at a state park near my house. Right now, it's, you can see the table's wet. It's been raining. I was going to light several more, but I decided to just go with uh, one of each. If it starts raining again, I can get them under cover. The raindrops hitting the vent uh, it just doesn't work real well. It makes the enamel pop off, so I'm going to try to be a little more uh, careful to preserve because they're, they're still originals. They're not IPE uh, reworks. They're they're still original. I want to keep them that way, so I'm going to be real careful of the rain. The of the two of them, the Coleman is far more common than the AGM. I see about ten to one for the Coleman, and they just seem to be a lot more more popular. People seem to like them a lot more. But the the AGM has a lot better look, in in my opinion. The Coleman is a much better lantern as far from a manufacturing standpoint. You don't really see any uh, problems with them. They're easy to keep going, uh, very reliable. The AGM lanterns seem to be plagued with stress cracks on the fonts. Uh, definitely undesirable in a pressurized fuel tank. I'm sure the Forest Service didn't really like that <laughs> too much from a safety standpoint. Um, and that may be why so many few of the AGMs or American lanterns exist today when they failed uh, or leaked or cracked, they were simply discarded. No one ever thought that they would be, you know, a desirable lantern later on. Or the Forest Service simply stopped ordering due to the weakness in the font. But they are definitely a lot harder to find than the, than the Coleman. And if you do find them, they have stress cracks in them. So to find them that still work uh, without being uh, modified or anything, it, it's pretty hard to do. But this is this is one that has held together. So I don't pressurize it a lot. Uh, I use low pressure on it just so I don't uh, stress the font and <laughs> cause a stress crack. The, uh, the earliest Coleman I have is dated 1933, but I have seen uh, 1932 Coleman lanterns. Uh, as far as I know, the AGMs have no date on them, um, not, that, not that I can find. The AGMs are a little bit different, and what I like about them is they either had a spotted or the Art Deco style vent. That, that vent is very cool, the Art Deco vent. They are almost always white underneath. Um, it just reflects more light. When it's total dark, I wanted to shoot this at nighttime, by the way, but all I got was, I mean, I'm not a really good at this, and all I get is just two bright lights. You can't see the lanterns. This is early morning, when the sun came up, had breakfast, just kind of waiting for the rest of the sunlight to come up and everybody get up so I was just shooting some of the lanterns while it was quiet. The AGM vents uh, are almost always white underneath where Coleman vents um, they can be either like a maroonish red or a white on or a green on top and they're almost always white underneath but I have seen some that are not white underneath and I'm not sure if they came that way because it would have been very simple to just replace the white ones if they got chipped or broken. And at the service centers and when they're working on these, they probably didn't care if they had another vent from a lantern off the shelf, which they used, they could have put it on there. So there's no real way of knowing. The There are two different burner setups on the AGM for service lanterns that I have and that I've seen but all the Coleman have the same burner setup, makes parts sourcing very easy for the um, Coleman's. 
when I find these, I I prefer the unrestored, if you call it restored, but unpainted, uh, especially in the AGMs, so you can tell if there are cracks, stress cracks, or what's been done to it. Even if it has some stress cracks, if it hasn't been painted and you see it's original, you know what kind of condition it's in. That's what I, I look for and try to find. And I've got several of, several of these. Another difference in these are the bail handles. The AGM definitely has a, a cooler handle. Mica globes for these are far superior to glass. They don't break, they rattle around, they're easy to toss around, easy to do. Nothing beats the look of original mica, but unfortunately, over time, they, they do uh, deteriorate. Uh, Fred Kuntz and others uh, reproduce these, so it's not too hard to find. AGM used a brass frame on theirs. I'm not sure why they chose to go that route, but uh, it's pretty, pretty cool looking. Coleman's was just a stainless, I believe it's stainless uh, metal. They're relatively easy to find, but if you can find an original one, it really looks nice. It, the, the light coming through an original mica is very cool. Mantles is a, another thing that I think is very underrated. People buy these mantles because they're what's available to them. But the original steel clites and the older mantles, they're a little bit harder to find. And sometimes they cost a little bit more if you have to go onto eBay or whatever to get them. But the color that they produce is the way the lanterns were designed or what they were supposed to have when they were originally used. And I try to use the, the older mantles, the thick weave, as, as much as possible. They're just... They just have a nicer look to them, and you don't have any problems. There's no holes burning through. You, can, they just work, and they last a long time. Some of these lanterns that I have have, have been used several times, and they still have the same mantles on them. It, it's worth the in, investment. The Philippines were producing the Peerless mantles uh, for a while. They're a newer production, but they're still really good mantles. I use them a lot, but only the ones that came from the Philippines. The ones from India, even even now, I mean, other people may have some luck with them. Uh, I do not. I don't care for them at all. I've kind of become a hoarder when it comes to the mantles. If I see some, I, I grab them because I want to use them and have them for you know, next year and the year after to be able to to use them, use these these lanterns and hopefully to be able to provide mantles. Somebody had this lantern a hundred years ago, ninety years ago. And I the way they're built, I would think that someone will have it in ninety years from now. I would like to maybe pass on some of the mantles that are worthwhile to whoever's gonna use it in the in the future. And they don't have to use some kind of that comes from India or sold at Walmart, you know, something, something that really, that really works well. Yeah, I, it's frustrating to go out and light a lantern that's 90 years old, that's quality built, and try to hang some cheap mantle on it. It's, it's just not, it's just not pleasant. Get the, get the ones that really go on there. I, I enjoy that a lot more. And those birds have a lot to say this morning. It's, I don't know how to describe it, but it smells so good since it just rained. The air is so clean and clear. It really smells good here. The park I'm in is actually in Bastrop, Texas. It's called Boucher State Park. It's a small park on the backside of Bastrop State Park. And it's usually a pretty popular park, but with rain in the forecast, there's just not a lot of people out here, so I thought it'd be a quiet time to maybe shoot some of the, the video. That I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. These lanterns specifically I like because they're lanterns that weren't available to the general public. 
you couldn't go in and buy this lantern. They were strictly provided to the Forest Service. So there's a lot fewer of them in existence. Some, some of these other lanterns, I mean, there's just millions of lanterns out there. So to find something that's different is, and unique is just as important as, as having one. They all work great. They all look great. But I just like to have something that has a little history to it. Um, when I'm when I'm camping, a lot of the people come up, uh, and it's just kind of a conversation starter too. People want to ask about the lanterns and talk about them. Uh, it's a good icebreaker. Uh, most of the time, they just want to know why I have so many of them. If I'm afraid of the dark or something, <laughs> or or they want me to turn some of them down because they're sleeping. But uh, hopefully one day I'll have a big enough place where I can just light them up and not have to worry about keeping anybody else awake. <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to be quiet. You can just listen to the lanterns, which I like to do. I could probably just go to sleep to this. The, the sound I remember from a child on the riverbanks and fishing. The, the sound is very soothing. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you like it. Leave a comment, uh, please. It really helps. I'm trying to kind of build a channel uh, about this kind of stuff. Uh, and it would help if you would like, comment and share uh, if you like this, this kind of content. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for watching.